الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam it is important that we maintain the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is important that at all times we are conscious of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that he hears everything the fact that he sees everything the fact that we are in absolute need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are answerable to him Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most beautiful way of life. If we were to follow it, we would definitely achieve success in this world and the next. Today I'd like to spend a few moments on a specific point that is of extreme importance for every single one of us. And that is the point of truthfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and ensure that you are only in the company of the truthful. If it is so important to be in the company of the truthful. then what do you think is the virtue of being truthful yourself? It's important we understand that truthfulness starts with a person being truthful in his or her relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot be a truthful person if I'm not true to my maker. The one who made me deserves to be worshipped alone. No association of any form of partnership with him. If I do that, I will not be truthful. But if I worship him alone and I learn his qualities, his names, understand who he is, why he has made me, where I am and the fact that I am heading in his direction, I shall return to him. If I am conscious of that and I work towards that all the time, then I will be truthful in my relation with my maker. If I am from amongst those who fulfills my obligation that he has put on my shoulders, then I am truthful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot claim to be truthful to my maker when I am not bothered about what he has placed on my shoulders in terms of obligation. Nor will I be considered truthful to my maker if I am a person who forgets that I am going to return to him. The next point of truthfulness in order would be truthfulness to the messenger that was sent by the same maker that we have just spoken about. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the messenger that Allah has chosen to send to us as the final Nabi. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is of utmost importance that I am truthful to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my claim when I say wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. I bear witness that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is his worshipper and his messenger. How can I claim that by tongue when my actions and deeds are heading in another direction altogether? So this is why we teach and we promote and we preach that there is room for improvement in the lives of every single one of us when it comes to becoming closer to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, becoming more truthful in our claim that indeed we believe and we bear witness that he is the messenger. What is the point of claiming that he is the messenger when the message he has come with holds no value in our eyes or even in our system? 
if that was the case and if we were to ignore his message or what he has come with then why would it be that we have declared that we believe that he is the messenger may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us truthful in that declaration of faith of ours so just as we are truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be able to show the truthfulness to Allah via being true to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he came to us teaching us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he brought forth how we should live in our lives the type of clothes we should wear the type of dealings we should have and everything else in fact even this very topic of truthfulness within our faith was brought to us through the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah make us good and may he make us even better my brothers and sisters never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the topic of being truthful to Allah and his messenger is a subject that requires introspection every one of us needs to look into ourselves and on a daily basis we need to improve our relation with our maker we need to improve our relation with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam just like we spoke moments ago about how to develop this truthfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping him alone by learning his names his qualities and by living by what we have learnt we also need to make mention that it will be impossible to be truthful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam without learning his teachings so knowledge is a source of truthfulness if we are truthful we would be learning and we would be increasing our knowledge every day we will make an effort to go out and sometimes fight our laziness or fight our desire to be doing something else when knowledge is being imparted truthfulness requires that where we see knowledge is being imparted we will make sure we are there we will make an effort to find ourselves present at that particular venue may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to be truthful and at the same time we would increase the knowledge of the deen the knowledge of the religion that was brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and start putting into practice what we have learnt that is what is truthfulness because a person who is the furthest away from the truth is he or she who learns something who knows what it is and who knows that it is correct but does not put it into practice that would be hypocrisy may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it so I call on yourselves and myself to put into practice what we have learned about the deen to protect it to look after it in a beautiful way sometimes we start asking questions about the deen because we have not equipped ourselves with the correct answers and therefore we begin to doubt some of the teachings solely because of ignorance may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us of the ignorance but that same cure of ignorance will not be able to come unless we are truthful to the word by searching for the knowledge by making an effort to learn it by trying to understand what is it that my maker wants of me why were there so many people who were more powerful than myself wealthier than myself they led a happier life than myself yet there came a day when they passed on where did they go who did they go to the answers of all these questions would also help us becoming more truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to that message that we have claimed to be believers within so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can learn this message part of being truthful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to send blessings and salutations upon him every time you hear his name and as often as possible it is extremely important we understand whoever sends blessings and salutations once upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them tenfold imagine if I want to be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all I need to do is to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so whenever we hear his name we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to accept it from us truthfulness towards this Nabi and this Prophet is also going out of our way to learn his biography 
to learn how he was brought up to learn his entire lifestyle the struggles the trials the tribulations the days of happiness the days of difficulty that he has been through and how he dealt with all the conditions and situations throughout his life that truthfulness comes with many perks it comes with many benefits it will teach us how to lead our own lives because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana indeed for you there is a shining example to emulate in that of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire lifetime his entire existence so many lessons we have to learn but if we are not truthful to our own deen to allah and to the messenger how will we be able to learn that some of us have made no effort in trying to learn the details of the life of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yet we have made a great effort in learning about the lives of the illuminaries of today's age and those who are popular amongst us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to learn the life of the best of creation and to learn a lesson from it imagine to be truthful in that way is actually an act of worship you are reading a life and a biography and for every word you are reading you are getting some form of a reward because it is an ibadah it is an act of worship to go through the sacred life of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam just like it is an act of worship to go through or to put into practice those teachings of his that we will pick up as we are going through his autobiography may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he grant us strength what is of extreme importance also is for us to be truthful within our own families truthful to our parents by understanding who they are by understanding why allah has chosen them for us and why he has not kept a choice within us as to who our parents will be nor did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let the parents choose exactly who their children will be subhanallah so this is why truthfulness to parents is of utmost importance even if they are not muslim we are truthful to them in that we will fulfill their rights we will respect them we will not obey them when it comes to the disobedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in everything else we will be truthful to our link with our parents we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the goodness in that a day will come perhaps it has already come for a lot of us when we will be parents we would expect truthfulness from our own children a beautiful relation from them with us so we should also have a beautiful relation with our own parents again to be truthful to your parents in your relation with them is definitely a great act of worship that is enjoined in the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made manifest in more than one place in the beautiful revelation so my brothers and sisters just like we should be truthful to our parents it is important it is very important that we as parents or those of us who are parents are truthful to our own children truthful to our children by being the correct role models for our children by bringing up our children in a beautiful way in such a way that when they look at us they can learn a beautiful lesson just by looking at us and emulating our lives ask yourself a question am i a role model for my children or my siblings who might be younger than me or even those who are slightly older than me am i a role model for my family members if i am then insha allah by the will of allah i may be the one who is truthful to his own children and his family members but if i am a person who is a parent bestowed children whom many are crying for and don't have may allah bless those who don't have children with children through his mercy i mean many are crying to have children and we have the children but we after we have them are not the correct role models for them if this is the case we are not truthful to the gift of allah upon us we are not truthful to our own children it is important that we understand nurturing them will not happen only by admonishing them and by giving them the verbal medication no but it comes in a greater way by them following the example that we lay may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who whom 
their words and their actions are similar. Not from amongst those whose words are in one valley and their actions are in another valley altogether. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. Brothers and sisters, truthfulness towards your workmates is also extremely important. When we are dealing, we are truthful to the one we are buying from or the one we are selling to. That is of utmost importance. It is the sign of a good Muslim. This is why when we say truthfulness, it extends into every single aspect of our living. Important to know that. If I am dealing and I have cheated a person in my business or in the product that I am about to sell to him or her, in that case, how can I call myself an upright believer when I am not truthful? Similarly, if I am working for someone and I cheat when it comes to my hours of work or the conditions of work, I am busy on the internet whilst I am supposed to be doing something else. I am reading the paper, I am having tea, I have gone out on an extended lunch break every single day with an excuse that is lame. If that is the case, I am not truthful in my workplace. How will we as a Muslim ummah be able to achieve? How will we be able to answer the Almighty when he has placed on our shoulders certain responsibilities that we are not fulfilling. Today we are in this beautiful university, in this beautiful country of Malaysia. And I'm sure every one of us, mashallah, we have a timetable when to attend lectures, when to perhaps deliver the lectures in the case of the lecturers and so on. When we would come and when we would go, if we were people who stuck by that timetable, we would achieve much more. Don't you agree? But if we were people who were not truthful even to our own timetables, then we would not be upright mu'mineen because it would be difficult for a person who, is, who disregards their timetables to actually become very mindful of their own salah. This is why I have found, and perhaps you may have found, that a person who is regular with their five daily prayers, they would be regular with most of their other appointments through the day. So if a person arrives five minutes before salah, for every single salah, when they have an appointment at the doctor, they will perhaps arrive five minutes before the appointment. Not like those who could not be bothered to pray. They are not truthful to their maker in the obligation of prayer. How will they be truthful to a little dentist down the road whom they have an appointment with? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Some of the brothers and sisters must be thinking, well, the dentist has been paid, so we will arrive there early. The reality is the payment, the really, the payment is not what is of importance, but the discipline and the truthfulness is what is, is, what is of importance. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the gift of prayer and salah at specific times connected to the sun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more steadfast in that prayer so that we can be more truthful in our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, truthfulness extends to our neighbors. We need to be truthful by protecting the interests of our neighbors, those that are common and those that are within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your neighbor has left, for example, whether it's on holiday or on a daily basis to work, it's up to us to take care of their property or to keep an eye without even having been told. But with us, let's be honest, today we don't even know who our neighbors are. We live in high rise buildings and the person who's at the door right next to us, we've never even greeted them. Perhaps we might have bumped into them in the lift without knowing that they were our neighbors for the last 12 years. Is this what is considered as truthfulness? When the neighbor has so many rights that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that Jibreel, the angel Gabriel, kept on stressing the rights of the neighbors to the degree that he says, I thought he was going to make him an heir of my estate when I pass away. That's how important the relations with the neighbors is in Islam. Yet, a lot of us can do much better. Let us make an effort inshallah to know our neighbors solely for the pleasure of Allah. Solely because we have rights over them, they have rights over us. My brothers and sisters, truthfulness extends into so many things. Even when it comes to lost property, imagine how it is such a great act of worship to search and to look for the person whose property it may be. A person who calls out in a public place saying 
that we have the property that is lost. Whoever has lost X, Y or Z, please contact so and so. Did you know that that is a great act of worship and it is a sign of truthfulness? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So if this is the teaching of Islam, take a look at how beautiful our lives will be. People are truthful to us and we are truthful to them. But it all starts with truthfulness to Allah and to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the deen as a whole. My brothers and sisters, if we look at the systems that operate, not only in this country, but in most countries, take a look at the traffic for example, how it moves, the courtesy on the road, the fulfillment of the laws and the rules in order to create or to facilitate the movement of traffic. It is important that we are truthful to the laws of the land as well, where they facilitate for us to live in a way that everyone is catered for and everyone is looked after. This is of utmost importance. A person who breaks the road rules, for example, will create such a big inconvenience for others that they would not be known as a good Muslim. Imagine you see a person looking like a very religious man and he is the one breaking all the rules of the road and when you tell him, brother, why are you doing this? He tells you it's not in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. These rules are there in order to facilitate something as a means. It is not as an injunction that would be found in the Quran. The Quran will not have a verse telling you drive on the right side or the left side or 60 kilometers or 120 kilometers. But the Quran has definitely given the authority on land that particular authority to set out rules and regulations that will result in the facilitation of life and making easy for everyone to coexist and to live in a way that the truth prevails, that which is good would come out inshallah, that which is bad would actually be curtailed and at the same time everyone can go about their different business in a way that is respectful of one another with ease. My brothers and sisters, look at Islam. What a broad framework that Allah has laid. And if we are truthful to ourselves, my brothers and sisters, we will understand everything that I have said today. May Allah make myself strong. And may Allah make every single one of you strong. And may Allah make us truthful to ourselves. My brothers and sisters, that is an extremely important point that I would like you to take home today. Are you truthful to yourself? Do you see the changes in your body as you grow? Do you look into yourself and see the signs that are showing you or the signs that lead you towards your maker? And in your own selves, do you not see? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us see the signs. So be truthful to yourself by being upright, by learning, by spending time to learn where you are going to go to once this life comes to an end. Because mashallah, the beauty of this university is that it is in a Muslim country and as Muslimin, take a look at the Jumu'ah that we are engaging in right now by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This means we are not just preparing to become top qualified surgeons or doctors and accountants and so on for, for use or benefit of this particular life but we are inshallah preparing also for the life after death that is why we are seated here today by the will of Allah this is truthfulness to yourself to understand who you are where you were before you were born where you are right now what is happening to you right now, where you are going, where you are heading, and ultimately where you will be, where you would like to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us prepare for this. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimina fastaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'hdihi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون أيها الإخوة في الله صلوا وسلموا يرحمكم الله على النبي المصطفى والحبيب المجتبى كما أمركم بذلك ربكم جل وعلا فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم فصل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد أفضل الخلق أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسول وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين الأئمة المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم ارض عنهم وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعنا معهم بمنك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا واجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم وفق السلطان سلطان سيلانغو السلطان شرف الدين إدريس شاه الحاج بن السلطان صلاح الدين عبد العزيز شاه الحاج ووفق ولي عهده لما تحب وترضى ووفق ولي عهده تنكو أمير شاه ابن السلطان شرف الدين إدريس شاه الحاج اللهم وفقهم لما تحب وترضى واحفظهم واحفظ هذه البلاد وسائر بلاد الإسلام اللهم انصر المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأراضين يا صاحب كل نجوى ويا منتهى كل شكوى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين